see him at Old Trafford? Um, no, we don't have players returning. Um, Mason, Reese, and Jilly won't make the game. <coughs> um, ben Moore, we know, is out. I think uh, so. We're uh, as we were. I think we Jack Jow. Jow had a small injury at the weekend, so he's back involved. You mentioned Mason Mount there. Does that feel like a lost cause from a Chelsea perspective? Does it feel like he has played his last game at Chelsea? A lost cause. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's, you know, it's not, it's not my, it's not my answer to make. It's probably between Mason and the club. How much are you relishing the, the test posed by a Manchester United team still needing a point to qualify for the Champions League next season? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a similar situation to um, approaching Manchester City, albeit they won the league the night before, but they're a high-level team who, are on, you know, in a really positive way, Manchester United will have the, that. So. It's the same point from uh, from how I approached going into the city and how the players approach it more importantly. In terms of if people think we haven't got much on the game, then the players have to show them that there is in terms of their personal and collective um, approach to it in the game because we'll obviously have to go there with a, a very good mentality because they're a good team that are fighting for something that you know we've fought for many years and now we're not in that position. So players need to show. I was going to ask you about Raheem Sterling as well as some suggestion he might be left out of the England squad for the games uh, next month. Do you see that as a as a setback based on maybe the season he's had, or is it? Do you look at it the other way that it's a chance to just then switch off after this Newcastle game and and go again in sort of September for those internationals? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know the the exact details of the conversation between Raheem and Gareth and their, you know where that's at at all. So. Um, all I do know is that Raheem is obviously a, a top-level player who's played for England for a lot of time. So, just from my sort of personal um, memories of playing in England for many years, I know that sometimes these games at the end of the season are different challenges compared to individuals. I've played a lot of games, a lot of minutes, and so if there's if there's a mutual conversation between the two of them, then I'm sure they'll find the right outcome, best for England, best for Raheem. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Cheers. We'll go to City. It's our spot. Hi Frank, um, as this is your last press conference here and you've only got a couple more games to go, can you put your finger on why this season has been so disappointing? I think there's probably a lot to to go over to get to the bottom of it um, because you know, uh, for a, a club like us that generally has been you know, challenging uh, the top end of the league and for cups year after year for many years, I mean, there's probably been a couple of years where we've come off it at different times. Um, but when you are used to that, then I think you have to um, explore every reason um, and make sure you don't let those reasons happen again. And some of that in terms of football and squad is a personal and collective responsibility in terms of what happens on the pitch. But we have to look at every issue the club does to, to try and um, be sure that that doesn't happen going forward. I think the feeling outside this, this building, this club, is that next season, when you look at who might challenge, you know, phrase that's always been used is that Liverpool and Chelsea will wake up and they'll be much better and they'll be challenging. Is that how you see it as a football man that next season it won't be that difficult to switch it around so that once again this club is up challenging top four and maybe cups and wins? Well I don't know that because the Premier League moves on very fast, everyone's moving on and asking, trying to do the same things and you see the emergence of the Newcastles and Brighton's and Aston Villa's and these teams that are getting themselves in that equation now for, for top four at least this season. And my experience of football is that if you switch it off, it's not easy to switch it on. So that doesn't um, always become an overnight remedy. So that's obviously not going to be my responsibility. But as I say, from my experience of being in a consistent performing club and squad for many years, the moment you do switch it off, it becomes very hard to switch it on. So I think it's uh, that will be the test next year. Players don't always know when it's their time to go and, and have that, that great goodbye and it was a bit like that with you and Chelsea. I remember when you came back with Derby and that the cup side you went round and thanked everybody because you never really got a chance to say goodbye. Looking ahead to tomorrow and, and, and Sunday, obviously you're not going to be in next season, but who, have, have the players had the conversation so that they maybe get that chance, like for example Mason Mount, if we are all right in saying you might leave in the summer, have the players had that opportunity to, to, to be told that and maybe have their, their goodbyes at the weekend? Well, not that I'm aware of, um, and I think I would be aware of that. So that would be a conversation with club and player. Um, 
I had had the conversation when I was here, but it was after the last game of the season at home, so it was a different situation. But um, as far as we stand here now, players are contracted to the club, and uh, who knows what the future lies individually, collectively for everyone. But at this moment, I'm not aware of that. Finally, on, on for you, I mean, it'd be great to see you back in management next season, somewhere, wherever that may be. But you look at the Premier League this year, 11 out of the 20 clubs have changed managers. Is this the most uncertain now that football management has ever been in terms of you don't get things right within months, you can expect to be out of the job? Yes. No, I, I, I think the, the, the stat that you ruled off says it, doesn't it? I think, is that a record? I presume it's a record. Um, so I think, you know, there's, there, are, there are understandable factors to it in terms of the, the, the brand of the Premier League and what it means to teams to stay in there. So um, I don't think it's viewed that differently now if the first person that um, receives the, the, the blame, if you want to put it that way, is the coach. And if you understand that when you go into these jobs, then that's probably a good thing to understand it. But of course, there's lots of other factors in these things. I'm not talking about my own position here. I'm talking about all these managers and... You know, you wonder how successful always it is to change and those things. So, um, but yeah, it's clear that it's become that kind of a, 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 a job and a situation. Um, and there are many teams that are fighting possibly with expectations that might, might not be um, exactly stable. Um, so that, that bit is hard and we're in a very reactionary world anyway. So I think in years gone by, the reaction of one, two, three defeats or whatever it might be would have been different. Now we have this sort of explosion very quickly. And I think you just have to understand that when you're when you're doing this job. Good luck for someone good luck next season. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, go to Ashali next. Hi Frank. Hi. Um, obviously the club confirmed the news of Bradley Shield's injury. Mm. But what's the time frame on his recovery and uh, how big a blow is it for him personally? It's a big blow for him. I'm really disappointed for him because he's come here. I think he's impressed, and you know the games just before he got injured, was, I was very happy with him, and uh, I think he's going to be a really good player for the club. Um, but the injury is unfortunate, it's a co bit of a complicated injury in his hamstring and we're probably talking uh, months rather than weeks, unfortunately. Um, and that's all I'll say at the minute because you know it's a, it's a little bit complicated as I say. But we, I, I hope for him that the timing of it over the summer means he's not missing games and you know, he comes back stronger. In terms of the goalkeeper selection process for these last few games, obviously we saw Edouard play against Torres, Cat at the weekend. From your point of view, are you looking at making rotations in that position for the last game? We'll see. We'll see. You know, like, you know, I don't think any other manager, regardless of what's on the game, is probably going to declare their team to me, so we'll see. And just one final one for me. In terms of the game against Manchester United, what do you want to see from your players out there? Well, the, the usual... Um, <clears throat> requirements and the basics which I've spoken about a lot since I've been here and they're not easy to switch on you have to train and prepare and it has to be like a standard set and unfortunately we haven't met that standard um, this season regularly enough uh, and in my time here the one thing I can say is that I've seen probably some reasons why um, but in the short term for two games that are left now in three days um, the players have to reach the standard and level of performance. I think that we did at Manchester City, to be fair. Not an easy game for, for the players there to approach that game because of what was going on at their end. And I thought we approached it, we deserved more out of the game. And the performance, I can say, was, yeah, it's lots to improve, but um, the attitude and the application and all the basics were, were good and right. Um, and that's what I expect to see in the last two. Thank you. The last one on the section from the... Hi, Frank. Um, I wanted to ask about Paul and Stanley and Lawrence Stewart because they were only appointed to co-sporting director roles a couple of months before you came in. So how's the dialogue been with them in this short period of time and, and um, how have they been to work with? Yeah, the, the dialogue's been really good. From, from the moment this opportunity came up for me, I've had really good dialogue. Um, been able to get on well with them on a personal and professional level and it's nice to have that communication uh, close. You know, I, um, it's something when you work in this job, you understand when you don't have that feeling of a close communication on the football inside, you miss it. And um, with, with both of them, with Paul and Lawrence, I've had that in, in their own ways. Um, and that's been a good thing and I appreciate that. And obviously this, their big, big job, you know, we want to bring Chelsea back to where uh, we want to get it to. But the, the responsibility is not all theirs, but they play an important role, of course, in it. Uh, and I've been impressed by, you know, their, how our interactions have been. And, you know, I wish them well, certainly going forward off the back of this period for me um, in how they work and operate going forward. From what you've seen on the inside, um, do you think Chelsea now have the structure above the head coach to, to start building the club back up to the level that it was? 
Yeah, well, I think so. And, and, you know, when you look at the good models around that have consistency in those areas and, and, and decision making and how the club moves forward, I think they're generally the more successful clubs. We talk a lot about the Brightons and the Brentfords now and now the Newcastle, Manchester City, all in different ways. But I think there's a real alignment of, of thinking through the club. Um, and I think where we are at the minute, I think we, that will be the work process of trying to say where are we aligned and which, where do we want to get to and what does it look like. You know, there's a lot of work in that. And I think, as I say, in Paul and Lawrence, I think we have good people in there to do that. Because um, as I say, I think being connected is a big, big, is a big deal. And it's hard in the modern world because I think everything, as I mentioned earlier, very reactionary. So if you want to go in a certain direction and, it, and you don't get any joy for a while, then of course people will react to that. But this you know, could be, for Chelsea, a bit of a longer picture than that to try and get it's a bit more of a process. Um, so, of course, Chelsea have to get that right at their end, but obviously people have to stick with that along the way.